Hi, how you doing? Nice to meet you, Simon. Same here. Um, could you also show a little uh, presentation of the script runner plugin? Could uh, make some questions after that? Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so uh, Script Runner has been around uh, since way back when Jamie started writing it in 2005. Yeah. He started writing his own add-ons yes. and uh, he started that platform. One of the first things that he solved was, uh, for example, he wanted to be able to extend Jira. And a lot of the features that he's written really are because he needed them. Um, uh, things like if you're resolving an issue, then uh, you may want to have a, the first thing you saw was a validator that said, well, if you're going to resolve it as fixed, why not have a fixed version? Yes. So that's how it's all started. And then really what we're talking about with Script Runner, especially for, as it started with Jira, is how do you extend Jira? How do you get more out of it? And people are asking, how can I do that in Jira? Well, a lot of the times the answer is use Script Runner. And uh, 13,000 uh, customers um, or installations support that theory that Script Runner is a great way to extend Jira. So here's an example of uh, one of our latest uh, features, which is really letting you customize the Jira user interface. Um, and in this case, what we're showing on the screen is a screenshot of a, of a view of a Jira issue and some of the areas that you can make changes using uh, scripting. So for example, we've actually got on the screen, we've got uh, the added button there, which is approve. Now that button can go away and actually do some sort of scripts and run those scripts and actually come back up with even a pop-up screen that shows you an AI flag, things of that nature. That can be put anywhere on the on the on your on your uh, screen. In fact, there are a number of extension points of where you can customize it. Yeah, and another example that you see on the screen is really that we change the color of the of the text. So you can even go that far as to put in some CSS yourself. Um, and then you also see uh, towards the the middle of the screen. Uh, this is a web section, so we've added my top five ranked issues, um, and that's just personal to me, of course, and that's something you can add. And then finally, we've got two web panels. Um, you see one over on the right-hand side here, which actually says, this project is going to be deprecated. Now, that could be just for the ABC project um, and showing up on your panel. Also, we've got the parent description, so we're in the subtask right now, and uh, you can actually show the parent description there on the left in the web panel. But imagine if you're actually able to then extend that and make use of REST and pull in data from LinkedIn about your customer, which uh, we actually saw a bit of a, a demo of uh, things like that in the cloud uh, today, earlier today. So these are just one, one, one this is just sort of one area of where you can uh, make, uh, extend your uh, Jira interface, let's say. Um, but we've also gone, so with the um, Jira product, we, you are able to customize and automate. So you can extend things on workflows, post functions, conditions, validators, uh, then there's event handlers. So imagine tapping into some events and, and maybe I'll actually be able to show you that. Yes, I think I do in the, in the cloud version. So we'll come to that one. So we took that idea and we extended it to Bitbucket Server. And with Bitbucket Server, uh, they're a slightly different beast in that what are you dealing with? You're dealing with um, uh, pre and post uh, uh, pushes. And so um, you extend those events and uh, you can actually start to control and uh, bring about some elements of control within your, with your developers. Imagine doing that. Uh, and uh, for example, that you, you could tap into the uh, uh, project or repository creation event. And, and actually have it automatically set all of your permissions for your users and your, and your groups. Um, and that, that can be help, that can be done in the for past tense um, admin for hundreds or thousands of repositories or in the future when you actually just create them. So we've done that with Bitbucket Server and uh, tomorrow we're actually releasing Script Runner for Confluence Server. So you've got the news here first. Uh, so now you can extend and customize and automate um, in Confluence as well with scripted macros and menus and dialogues. So let's take a look at um, the Confluence product for a second. Yeah, sure. We're going to uh, use a scripted macro, and uh, we're going to use one called Alassian Versions. We've just made this one up. We've got a script. But what it's going to do is it's going to go off, go off and make a couple of calls to the Alassian Marketplace REST API. It's going to come back and bring in the latest versions. And we see lazy load adoption here because you can do it asynchronously whilst it's loading uh, in case it takes some time to come back. So we're pulling back the latest data of all the Atlassian products right there in your Confluence page. Yeah, that's fancy. Yeah. So you could do that with any REST call. So imagine what you could bring in dynamically uh, with your data. Uh, so here's an, uh, where we're tapping into an event, which is the page update. Um, so if you're going to update the page, you could extend it, write a little script, 
that checks the content of the page and uh, actually comes back and provide, let's, let's run it. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna edit it and uh, we're gonna do a page update and I'm gonna put in some text there. And we're gonna have uh, a, an event handler that looks at it and then and makes some suggestions on your content. So it can be like a content checker. And it's gonna produce an inline comment that says, okay, you've used Air Hostess, we're gonna give you a suggestion, perhaps you should use Flight Attendant instead. Um, or perhaps there's a little bit of a spell checker there and say a muck was spelt incorrectly. Yeah. Um, all as an event, automatically done, available today. So what we've done uh, very recently has been working very hard on, uh, on cloud and we were in the cloud week. Um, yes. And uh, how can I do Scriptrunner in the cloud? So announcing that coming soon, we actually have Scriptrunner for, uh, for Jira in the cloud. Uh, this will be an example of uh, running the script console to update a user called Charlie with a group, a project, and a role. But imagine if uh, that was hundreds of projects and, uh, and, and or even thousands of users. You can do all that using a script. Uh, we've got another example here of um, a scripted field or a calculated field. So we're going to take the customer value, the business value, and then add the two together. Very simple example, but um, this is being done and you can see it asynchronously catch up and the result is seven. So we have a calculated field. And this is an example of tapping into the uh, uh, version release event. So we're going to release um, a 1.0 uh, release and we're going to have script on automatically post a message to HipChat with all the fixed versions uh, that, that were fixed in that release. All available in the marketplace today. And the last one here is going to click start progress and we're going to have uh, a post function of that uh, transition automatically create a linked issue. Uh, so it's going to create a cloned issue, SR12. Uh, you can do this with parents and subtasks. And all this is available in the cloud uh, coming soon. Uh, so really, it's uh, how do you summarize? Are you running out of time? Okay. So. Great. All this uh, is uh, is a great example of, of all the extension points that you can have with ScriptRunner. So there are so many. It depends on which product we're talking about. But if we're to try and hone in a little bit, I mean, we, we touched on um, uh, extending your workflows uh, with post functions and conditions, etc. Uh, and there are you know, your, the creation of projects and and your Git workflows. So you can extend those. Um, and then in, and in Perhaps in confidence there isn't a workflow, so we can. Um, that's not a that's not a good example. Or if we we're to look at changing your UI, you can do that for all yeah. three products. If, if you wanted to tap in and extend, uh, there are a load of areas where you can do that. With Jira, you've got added things like JQL functions. Like probably the most common one is has links. Uh, that one's very very uh, useful. Yeah. People like that one. Or has comments is another one. Uh, there are loads and loads. So, and then there's the concept of events, tapping into events, where really you've got confluence page creations, you've got project create. Imagine if you created a, uh, a, a space in confluence and then have Jira automatically create a, a project as well at the same time. That would be nice. So things like that you can actually do, and you can plug the gaps with the REST API um, and, and start doing things cross-domain. So these are, uh, these are all available today. Uh, Bitbucket server, Confluence server, Jira server, and then coming soon, Jira cloud. And then later in the year, we're going to be working on ScriptRunner in Confluence cloud and HipChat. So watch out for that. Um, so I think really that that's, that only gives you a bit of a teaser and a flavor. Yes, but, um, yeah, there are definitely, we, we feel like it's a strong platform and, uh, and it sits right in the middle, especially once we start looking at HipChat as well. So yeah, working on the all working on the big the big three in, in server and coming soon in the cloud. Uh, so really, we're we're interested in, in what's coming next, and this is part of my presentation. So, uh, all right, I can probably stop that one there. So just a little question to the end. There are much uh, more new features in the uh, version 3.0. So um, your personal three big features of ScriptRunner at all. Okay, I mean, the one, I can think of two, the two most recent, uh, actually three, I'll go with three. So static type checker. So that's um, an inline uh, compiler. Uh, essentially says as you're writing your scripts, then it will give you some tips about where perhaps your um, code has been, uh, methods have been deprecated, things of that nature. So it's a bit of a helper. Uh, the, the, the 
use user interface changes. So now you can actually customize Jira and change it to be yes. how you want it. That's a big one. And then the very most recent one uh, is the version synchronizer. So if you create a version yeah. in one project, why not have it synchronize it to a number of others? Uh, that's quite useful. For collaboration, well. perfect. Absolutely. So those are probably the big three in uh, more recent times. Uh, for, 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 but not only for Jira, but the UI was for all three products. All right. So thank you here, Mark. Great.